Today I'm going to discuss magnetic monopoles, which are both one of the greatest lies in physics and are considered to be a problem with the Big Bang and are part of my series on Big Bang problems. If you're not familiar with magnetic monopoles, in a normal bar magnet, it has a north pole and a south pole. So the idea with magnetic monopoles is that you could somehow split the magnet in half, separate it, and have a north pole and a south pole that are separate. But in reality, what happens is if you split a magnet in half, you get a north pole and a south pole on one part, and a north pole and a south pole on the other part. You always have a north pole and a south, part, south pole. And so this is confusing to some scientists who would like to think that there could be separate north and south poles like there are separate positive and negative electric charges. But that's not the way nature works. And what it comes down to is if there were magnetic monopoles, we would have seen them. And we don't see them, so they don't exist, and we really should get past them. And then we have the problem where some people who are trying to model the Big Bang predicted that magnetic monopoles would be produced after the Big Bang at some point. And because there aren't any magnetic monopoles, it screws up their theory. Well, that tells you it's a bad theory. If your theory includes fictitious physics, or even if you try to include fictitious physics into your theory, it's a fictitious theory, and you should get over it. Now, that's not to say that all Big Bang models have to include magnetic monopoles, though, because they don't. So this only uh, applies to those models that insist on having magnetic monopoles in them. To understand the problem better, we can go back to look at the makeup of the quantum field itself. The quantum field is composed of quantum fluctuation dipoles. These are normally modeled as particle pairs. And the reason we know that they're dipoles is because of the Casimir effect. The Casimir effect is due to electric charge dipoles in the quantum field interacting by way of van der Waals forces, which cause pressure. And in particular, in the two-plate examples, it can cause two plates to be pushed together because it excludes quantum fluctuations between the two plates, causing there to be greater pressure pushing the plates together than pushing them apart. And there are also versions of, of the Casimir force where depending on the physical structure of the cavity, plates can be pushed apart instead of pushed together. So we know because of these van der Waals forces that quantum fluctuations have electric charge dipoles, at least some of them, if not all of them. And that tells us that these charge dipoles exist in space. And when a charge dipole rotates, it forms a magnetic field. So that if it's rotating in this plane, it forms a north pole this way and a south pole this way. And you can use the right hand rule where you rotate your fingers in the direction of rotation and your thumb points to the north pole. So that's a, a real quick way to understand it. And then, so you have a situation where even a single rotating dipole creates a quantum magnet. And the quantum magnet has magnetic fields around it, which are made by other quantum magnets that are aligning with the magnetic field. And those quantum magnets are made of rotating quantum dipoles. And that continues all the way down because the quantum fluctuations can be as small as they can possibly be. Uh, so they might be limited at the Planck length, but we don't know that. But for any real physical body or any real physical field that, that we can measure, there's always quantum dipoles around to form magnetic fields. So that's how magnetic fields form. So we always have a rotating dipole forming a north and south pole that gives us 
the, the bipolar magnetic field lines that we're used to. It never forms a single North Pole or a single South Pole. So magnetic monopoles don't exist. And as I said at the beginning, if there were magnetic monopoles, we would have observed them already. Uh, so as physicists, we should just skip over that. Now we can also consider what happens with particles like electrons and protons. With protons, we know from scattering experiments that they have a charge radius where they scatter particles and light. And this charge radius is thought to be comprised of quantum fluctuations. In the standard model, they're said to be quark any quark pairs. In my model, I model them as proton any proton pairs. But however you want to think of the protons, they have this spherical shell of particles that give them the structure that we see in scattering experiments. But what's happening when these quantum fluctuations are polarized due to the charge of the proton, they can't be polarized without inducing rotation. Uh, it's an energy saving mechanism. I have a paper on that, I'll, I'll link below that explains it in more detail. So what happens is you have these quantum fluctuations that are all rotating around the perimeter of, of the proton. And so we get a magnetic moment that can be calculated using a simple formula of a g-factor, which is close to 2. And then you have ECR divided by 4 pi, where ECR is the electric charge, the speed of light, and the radius. In the terms of the proton, it's the charge radius. Now, in terms of the electron, it's half of the Compton wavelength where the Compton wavelength is the diameter of the electron's quantum field shell. And I have more on proton-electron structure in my book, Goodbye Quarks, the Ionian Theory, and also in some of my papers that I'll link below. So we have this really simple way to understand the magnetic moment from the basic particles, or electron and proton, and the neutron is similar, slightly more complicated because it has both a positive and negative charge to make, make it neutral. But we can understand it um, based on dipoles and dipole interactions. And in particular, the reason the G factor is 2 is because if you have dipoles that are rotating at the surface, you have a positive charge going one way and a negative charge going one way. So if you model it using a spherical shell model, as I drew here, you have two spherical shells going in the opposite direction. And they both contribute a similar amount to the magnetic moment. The outer one has slightly higher magnetic moment than the inner shell. But you end up with a factor of two, and that's why the G factor is 2 instead of 1 because while physicists originally modeled the magnetic moment using a single shell of charge, they didn't realize that the shell was composed of dipoles where there's two charges moving in opposite directions which doubles the magnetic moment. And then it's not exactly 2 because of some unequilibrium cause of quantum field effects. So even when we deal with particles and their magnetic moments, they're explainable as rotating dipoles. So ultimately, all magnetic fields come down to rotating charge dipoles form the magnetic fields. So the magnetic fields always have north and south poles. Even when they're formed with a single positive or negative charge that's moving through space, you cause dipoles to rotate, and the dipoles form north and south magnetic fields. North and south poles and magnetic fields around them. So you can't escape having north and south poles whenever you have a magnetic field. There's no such thing as a magnetic monopole. And no one should have ever tried to include magnetic monopoles.
holes into a theory like the Big Bang model. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you're interested in learning more about physics, I would talk about magnetic monopoles briefly in my book, The 100 Greatest Lies in Physics. And like I said, I talk about the particle structure in my book, Goodbye Quarks the Ionian Theory. And I have my more general book on quantum field theory based on the particle pair model in the zero point universe. And I'm an independent researcher, so if you buy one of my books, that helps support me. And I also have a Patreon account linked below. So I appreciate your support, and thank you for watching.